it's day 18 of the cat and uh, starting to finally come together nothing on film as yet so not coming together in that concrete a sense but uh, starting to get some sort of uh, I suppose narrative arc if I want to be pompous about it um, so we're going to have basically a departure uh, an en route and arrival somewhere the departure and en route is the first leg the arrival is the second leg then I'll fly a circuit at the place we've arrived at and then there's some sort of closing uh, sequence as yet to be determined so I've got ideas what I'm going to cover I've got ideas for how each of those legs more or less fits in I made a few rough notes here just so uh, tell you about it and I've got the locations as well uh, pretty much it's going to be a water start this is an amphibious plane so as I said before I want to uh, show a departure from water and arrival at a hard runway I think I'll do it that way around so I'm going to depart from Aero Pelican I've got Aussie X3 in installed a couple of days ago and as luck would have it they've uh, created a nice water start location a couple of jetties and a bit of, bit of um, scenery around Aero Pelican and Aero Pelican is such a fabulous uh, scenic area to, to fly around um, it's a great choice so we're going to use that uh, depart from Aero Pelican. The kind of the next phase then you departure with takeoff. I'm going to fly around Aero Pelican a little bit just to uh, show off the scenery. It's got some gorgeous scenery. Fly over the air, airfield, uh, some of the reef, uh, lagoon kind of uh, scenery. So then the arrival anyway, we're transitioning into the arrival. Well, this is the second location of, of two really in the video and it's an air, an air strip called Longreach um, which is in central Queensland. Now this is a kind of fictitious journey really because Central Queensland, Longreach is it's, it's a very long way from um, Aero Pelican on the map and uh, it's not something you would credibly fly in a in a morning <laughs> which is going to be you know the apparent time scale that we're flying here. Um, but it's a really gorgeous airport, it's one of Anthony Lynch's uh, Australian airports. Uh, it's actually over the border of the um, FTX zones is out of the AU gold it's just on the edge of the AU red um, and it's actually I believe it's that I you know I'm, I'm not from Australia but I believe it's the home of Qantas uh, the airline and um, it goes some way to explain the uh, some of the scenery that you'll find at the airport some of the static aircraft there's a couple of Qantas li liveried aircraft there it's a really nice airstrip, it's got a little bit of the town modelled at the edge, it's got some nice buildings, it's got the two um, airlines, a prop, I don't know what they are, One's a seven, there's a 747 there, quite in Qantas colours, and there's a, uh, I don't know what it is, can't, I can't remember now, it's something like a, on the scale of a DC-3 or a DC-6. Um, what's also nice about it, it's got two, two strips, it's got a hard strip, um, for landing the big stuff on and it's got a dirt strip as well and it's really nice because it's in the outback area it's a very nice red uh, dirt strip um, so I'll maybe feature both of those but even even if I only land on the hard strip it um, looks great so and, I, and as, as I mean I've tried a lot of airports really before arriving on uh, long reach is what I'd use in this video I get really good frames there as well so there's no trickery required in getting a smooth video which is always a bonus. What I'll be talking about on the arrival and you know again the timing and everything is you know I can't be detailed about what's going to happen here but I'm going to be talking about the general complexity of operating an aircraft like this and um, you know something like this you really need to be thinking about using checklists now I I don't advocate using the checklist in actuality certainly not the um, interactive checklist you know, except for the first few times because it's a bit fiddly and cumbersome and actually a lot of it's just fakery you know you just know you do these things things on the checklist and they have no actual effect there's no need to be doing them so unless you're a real um, nut for precise detailed procedures um, it's just ritual so I'm not going to be doing that but actually there is a there is a sense in which uh, it becomes very clear in an aircraft like this why checklists are necessary. So we'll be talking about that. Um, something about the fact that I'm flying this aircraft solo, but in real life it's not. 
it's always crewed with two or three people. Um, this thing about talking about complexity is really setting up for the next leg of the trip, which is going to be a circuit. Now I'm going to focus in on the uh, what was I going to say? I'm going to focus in on the, the detail of the simulation by concentrating on a, a single engine operation. I'm going to fly a circuit and uh, fail an engine. Going to probably fail it shortly after the takeoff. So this, so this is really where engine management becomes uh, critical. Um, now, I've got some great stuff. I've printed off and uh, been having a look at here is the um, um, emergency and abnormal operation procedures from the. This is from the genuine cat manual. This. Um, and it's very detailed and it's very, you know, it's the sort of thing that appeals to me actually, <laughs> in a sense. Um, so things, you know, the sort of things it's telling me, I won't, I won't read through it, but um, obviously there's critical speeds and uh, they're different uh, than they are when you've got two engines, a lot lower, there's very little margin for error. Things like making turns, you know, there's very, very shallow angles of bank, um, recommended when you've only got one engine uh, and actually the standard way to make a turn is uh, largely using the rudder and not banking at all. Um, when you do bank, this, this is interesting, um, you bank into the live engine, so the live engine is the one that uh, dips, presumably that's because um, if you bank towards the dead engine picking that wing up is not as easy. So that's interesting. Um, feather in the prop and um, and stop. So you basically stop the propeller, windmilling, and uh, you reduce the drag. That's in there. Now, both of those, and there's more. You know, there's there's lots more about. Um, obviously, you need to use the rudder to to keep the um, asymmetry um, out. And there's a rudder trim, um, which I, I haven't actually used, but um, oh, we can look at that as well. What I discovered is when I was doing this was um, how much of uh, how much of this detail is actually not modelled in the simulator. So you can feather the prop, for example, and you and you um, you can stick to all these um, recommendations about which way you bank the aircraft. In practice, um, very few of these things have any effect. Feathering the prop I've established will. Uh, you can see it feather, you can uh, stop the prop, prop windmilling, so you've got a visual indication there, uh, it looks authentic in a, in a video. But actually one of, the, one of the, I mean the reason you feather the, the prop, um, which is highlighted in this um, abnormal operations part of the manual, is that um, you get an enormous amount of drag from a windmilling propeller, um, even if you pitch it to fully uh, course, you get a huge amount of drag. In fact, you get so much drag, according to the manual, that it's impossible to um, maintain a climb on a single engine, which is pretty disastrous. You can imagine if you've had an engine failure uh, during or just after the takeoff, pretty much guarantees a crash landing at best. Um, but that's not modelled. I've realised that um, there's no ob apparent difference in the performance if you feather the prop or not. So that's very disappointing I've got to say. Uh, so so there's no need to do it at all if you fly in the sim. Again unless you really you know you want to, I mean there is that thing about wanting to simulate the workload um, during a, an emergency but then again um, you can't do that anyway because you'd have two people in this plane, three if you're uh, flying it off the water managing that emergency. So the other thing then turning into the live engine as opposed to the dead engine, I haven't I haven't really experimented with that methodically but again I, I don't think that's simulated. Um, but I'll comment on that in the video and what I'll do is I'm, I'm deliberately going to take off on uh, at, at long reach on I'm going to take off on uh, runway 22 which puts the um, airfield buildings on my left. I'm going to fail the right engine. Um, that's all by design, so um, I'm flying it from the captain's seat, so I get a good view out the left and a rubbish view out the right, so I want to be able to get some footage out the left 
Uh, I want the scenic footage, which is the airport buildings. And uh, if I'm sticking to the recommendations, it means I fly a left-hand circuit. So all that comes together. A lot of planning in this stuff, you see. You wouldn't appreciate this. Um, so basically, the, the, this is to the idea here is just to take off, fail the engine, run through some of those procedures, um, hopefully get a circuit going successfully, maybe land on the dirt strip. Um, I'll see how this pans out. I, I'm trying to think of the orientation in my head. You, you probably get in three quarters of a circuit and then a quite a tight turn onto that dirt strip. I think I'm just, I can't do it in my head. Um, which would be great because then we get a you know we get a water takeoff, a hard strip landing, and a dirt strip landing. The strip's not. I mean, you can land on it because they have, but um, when you get down low the coned out area of the strip is actually an awful lot smaller than um, the the dirt area that you can see from the air so I'll just think about whether that's going to look re real or not so that'll be good and of course all this commentary all the commentary in the um, circuit will be we'll be mentioning some of these um, I suppose disappointments with the level of detail that is actually simulated and I don't want this to be a hatchet job because I think it's a great product and, I'm, and I'm, it's not my intention at all um, to to bring it down but I, I do th I, you know I have a genuine grievance about this which I'll come on to in a second uh, I think it's important to put a bit of balance in there as well all the reviews I've seen of the cat I, I haven't seen any pro very um, detailed proper reviews at all actually which is great because uh, there's a market for good reviews um, but everything I've seen is just uh, euphoric and uh, you know a little bit flipping uh, saccharine f to be frank about it um, you know few people have got bad things to say about this and uh, that's not balanced really because it's not all good um, it's tempting to compare the way they've simulated this to how the A2A guys have done you know AccuSim but two things there I don't, I, I don't think it's good to to compare two specific developers head-to-head head. I'm not sure about that I mean uh, uh, there's an ethical thing there that I haven't quite figured out um, but also I don't really know too much of how Aerosoft have done this versus how A2A have done this you know my, my, my instinct is that Aerosoft have really pushed the FSX modeling techniques pretty much as far as they can go and maybe added a bit outside of FSX um, whereas the AccuSim I think the a a A2A's aircraft it appears that they've somehow done all the modeling in great detail in custom code that's basically outside of FSX and is you know it's just sort of hooked in uh, I don't but I don't know how that works so I'm not going to go there because it would be speculation and uh, you know this is a 10 minute video at the end of the day uh, and I suspect I could do a lot of research on that a lot of talking and then none of it would make it in because it's just not possible to, to go into that level of detail Okay, having said all that, um, my genuine grievance then about this is, um, you know, you get this fairly, well, you know, you get a manual written by Aerosoft which is 100 pages long, but actually like 28 pages of it are about the s s simulation itself and the, um, the rest is how to work the um, radios and the GPS, which is great, I mean, I'm not knocking that, but... Um, What's missing really is details about exactly what is simulated in this model and how it works and nuances about how to use the switches and what the carb heat control does and the cow flaps and, and all of that. Um, you know other things like um, there's a auxiliary power generator uh, which you can switch on and off but um, you know reading through the Aerosoft forums actually it's, it's a dud it's a dummy it doesn't do anything at all adds nothing to the simulator and uh, you know it'd be nice to know that um, so but really the grievance the grievance part of this is um, not only have they not done that you know in terms of what they've given you in the manual they've supplied this gigantic uh, real life manual it's 320 pages lots of duplication in there as well by the way but 320 pages of real life manual instead and uh, the implicate oh, first of all that's too unwieldy to print out so you've actually it's very difficult to um, to refer to 
But the implication, which I think is a little bit uh, dubious, is that um, you can fly the aircraft using that manual um, as a reference. Now, you can, but as I've discovered, a lot of the stuff you'll be doing um, is meaningless and is completely unnecessary and completely pointless. You know, in terms of feathering, the props, um, well, I've mentioned some of these things already. Um, so, at the very least, it would have been nice to have that manual annotated, you know, maybe colours, colour coded or something, so that you could see which bits were relevant and which bits weren't. Uh, but personally, I would have favoured a custom written manual by Aerosoft about the sim, you know, and if you want to include the original manuals on the disc as well, or on the in the package as well, great, but, you know, these are not manuals for the simulator. So, I'm going to say that. I'm going to say that, uh, you know, in the interest of balance and because it's a grievance and this is a review, you know, I'm not I'm not here to um, sell this package but I hope my review pro probably will sell it because it's, a, you know, I do like it. So the ending of that will be the landing uh, hopefully intact, well it will be intact because I'll fake it if it's, uh, you know, <laughs> through the magic of movie making I'll have as many attempts as as, uh, as it takes and I'll cut together what looks good. And that'll be the end of the, the sort of bulk of the review really. Then there'll be an outro which is going to be some sort of, probably just uh, you dive into an en route flight, uh, maybe sunset, you know, I did that in the cat, in the, uh, did that in the uh, Piper Cub video, just because it looks nice. Yeah, okay, so we're done for, we're done for day 18. Uh, I might go and do a bit of flying now, it's Friday night so I've got plenty of time, so keep watching.